Hey guys, Marmalade here, AKA Nomadic Mike. What is up guys? Well, I'm bringing you along on my next adventure. Uh, it is, uh, I'll be out here on a trip for March 3rd to the 5th. And that actually could change and I'll tell you why in a minute. But uh, today is March 3rd and I am gonna be spending the next few days in Anza Brega Desert Park. And um, I am in the quest of hopefully doing five more peaks on my San Diego 100 Peaks list. I'm at 62 right now. I'm going to do a very tough one right now called Coyote Peak. It's, uh, it's actually gonna be kind of a warm day. I'm getting a later start than I wanted. I think the time I started will be about 8.15. Yeah, so that's my first peak. Uh, the issue I, I have is, I don't know if you noticed before, but I stay, I'm staying at Culp Valley Primitive Campground. It's free, they do have bathrooms, which is nice, but everything else I'm self-contained, so it was a really nice night, not very cold. But the issue is, not today, but tomorrow. Um, it's supposedly, and I haven't looked at the weather today yet, but as of yesterday, it was 90% rain, even possible snow, but I don't think it's gonna get cold enough to snow, but it could, I guess. But I was gonna do 11 mile hike tomorrow and still plan on it, uh, but if the weather's horrible, I brought a rain jacket, things like that, but if it's horrible or terribly cold, I may have to change plans and go hike something else. But um, my plan is to be out here for three days and two nights. So tonight will be my first night. I'm also, uh, with the SUV living, I'm gonna show you a recipe that I'm gonna to cook tonight. The issue is if it's just pouring and pouring, and let's say it pours all day, I mean, I, I'm gonna be stuck in my car. There's nowhere else to go. So I may have to leave and go somewhere else and do a plan B, which I don't have planned yet. But uh, that's the plan. So tomorrow would be um, two more peaks, 11 miles. And the third day I would pack up and, and, and by the way, uh, tomorrow the 11 miles is actually close to where the camp, the Culp campground is. That's part of the reason why I went there. Um, and then the third day I'm gonna do another one with two peaks. It's an out and back, but it's only like a little over four miles. So it's pretty quick. That way I can get home at a decent hour. So that's my plan. Uh, I'm gonna cook and relax. I'm gonna have brought firewoods. So I can do that too, but it's just gonna be very fluid. It seems like every time I do one of these, something happens with the weather or something. So uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, it's kind of the, uh, Part of the fun is the adventure in it, but anyway, thanks for coming along with me. And uh, this is gonna be a doozy today. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be up upwards of 81 degrees. So I'm gonna try to get to the top uh, mid-morning before it gets too crazy hot. Uh, and that's it. So we'll definitely see you down the road. Hey guys, Marmalade here on another attempt going for number 63, peak number 63 on the San Diego 100 Peaks list. Kind of out by Borrego Springs actually pretty close to that and if you can see behind me sorry for the sun but those big mountains back there there's a villager peak up there one of the hardest longest hikes on the whole list i have to do eventually and hopefully i can do it before this uh before it gets too hot out here once you get to the summer you can't be out here hiking it's not safe but uh anyway uh this is a tough one like i said it's only um it's kind of i kind of prefer actually because I, I don't mind steep as long as it's shorter so it's a five and a half miles round trip. So two and three quarters each way, but it's two and three quarters and 20, a little over 2,500 feet of climb. So that's averaging a thousand feet per mile. I mean, that's super steep.
Hey guys, Marmalade here with Marmalade's Backpacking and Camping Cuisine and with another really good camping recipe that I'm going to try out today. It is, let me read it, it is sausage spinach potato skillet dinner. That's right, so something hearty today. Uh, I am out in Anza Brego at a at a Culp Valley Primitive uh, Campground. It's free. They have actually bathrooms and then fire pits, things like that. So I'm gonna have a fire tonight. But let's, uh, let's get on with the ingredients right now. It's really windy. As a matter of fact, I just slammed my door. So I'm trying to do this behind my car so you can hear me. All right, let's look at the ingredients. All right, so as promised, here's some red potatoes, a couple mushrooms, lemon, garlic, and onion. I got the Adele's Italian style, uh, has some mozzarella cheese kind of in there, and then uh, it's a smoked chicken sausage. A little ground thyme, a little olive oil, and of course spinach. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is actually just uh, start ahead of time and boil uh, the potatoes, get them kind of semi-soft. So we'll start with that before I cook the rest of it. As soon as I filmed the potatoes going in there, I realized I didn't cut them up first, so there they are. Got them all cut up before they got very hot or got going, so doing that right now and like I was saying there's all prep ready to go I got the spinach and the and the olive oil over here and seasoning uh, like I said I'm hiding behind this car because it's pretty windy big storms coming in tonight all right guys these are about 80% uh, boiled and done so we're gonna heat them the rest of the way in the skillet first off we uh, just turn the fire on, get a little bit of olive oil going here. I bought a bigger pan finally. Uh, my other pan never held any of the food I was cooking. There's no shrink. Uh, I might add more, I don't know yet. Mushrooms. The mushrooms wasn't originally in the uh, Recipe, I just added it, so I like mushrooms, so a little bit more garlic there. Uh, salt and some lemon and juice in there. The last step is, of course, the potatoes. These are red potatoes, they look kind of gold right now. Put those in there. So we're just stirring it again, of course, and um, you know, when we're done, we should have a really good, solid, hearty, uh, filling uh, dinner here. Uh, I'm starving, so I'm gonna have a whole bunch of this. Don't, don't judge me. And I'm being messy, that's how I do it. That's how we do it here. And right now I'm getting smoked up by that, so, well, anyway, it gives you like a 3D effect. So let's see what we got here. Take a little bit of a sausage, a little potato. A little spinach. Oh, oh, oh. Just had an ember uh, blow on my arm. That is amazing. Let me hey guys, oh, day two. I think I parked on too steep of a slope. I kept sliding down to my feet all down all night, but uh, let's see what it looks like outside real quick. Hey guys, day two on this trip. Uh, it is March 4th, 2022. And man, like I said yesterday, has the weather and the plans changed. Uh, I don't know if you, can, you can't really see outside, but uh, it is 39 degrees. It's about uh, 7.40 in the morning. I woke up 
And as you saw, I make some coffee and talk to my neighbor who's having some car problems. But I think we got some help with our neighbors that uh, have a jump for him. But um, packed up, my tent was just thrashed. Um, it was so windy, my whole car was shaking that I was sleeping in. And um, my tent was just doing this all day and it and actually uh, was filled with sand because before it started raining, um, it was dry out and, it's, and the tent filled with sand. So everything I had in there, I kind of used my tent for storage. I do sleep in it sometimes, as you guys know, but sometimes I use it just to claim the spot when it's BLM land or and that's primitive camping. That way when I go hike, I have I can save the spot. So I thankfully I had uh, some cords of wood in there or uh, bundles of wood in there and that kept the tent in place or I think it might have blown away. All my stakes flew out and uh, you saw all the corner poles or dug deep holes and the car was shaking. Like I said, it started raining about uh, like like schedule about two or three in the morning and uh, just super windy and cold. It's 39 degrees and I don't know what the wind chill factor is right now. So um, if you remember my intro yesterday, I said I was going to do a longer hike today assuming that our weather was good and everything, but it's not good. I had to get out of there. So I'm going to do what I was going to do on the third day, which was purposely a shorter four, four and a quarter mile hike with two peaks. So I get two more peaks off the list. I'm going to try to do this. If it's too cold, I'm going to just come back. I can do this some other day, but uh, it's 39, but the wind chill feels like it's 20 something out there. So I'm going to try it. You guys know I wear shorts, so sometimes that makes it a little brutal, but um, try to get two more peaks off the list. So we'll get to 65. And then I'll take you into, uh, I have a couple of different plans. I, just, I don't want to say it until I get there and, uh, in case it doesn't happen, but uh, some more plans for today. And then uh, I may change my mind depending on how the weather does. I uh, plan on being out till tomorrow, so maybe I'll find somewhere else to camp. But if not, I'll just go home today and call it a day. I'm probably an hour and a half drives from home. So that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to get all, I brought my uh, ultralight umbrella, rain umbrella, and I also brought my rain jacket in case I need it out here. So I'll bring that. And maybe we can uh, see something pretty. It's got two peaks and about, I think it's 4.24 miles and about a thousand foot climb. So not too bad over that, that distance. Actually compared to yesterday too. So <laughs> anyway, all right. And I'm also, by the way, I'm a little sore after doing Coyote. If you watch that video, holy smokes. I would say that's one of the, I've done longer, harder, steeper hikes, but I haven't done that much elevation in that short amount of time. It was literally two and a half miles and 20, almost 2,600 feet. So uh, a fraction over a thousand feet per mile. And then it was actually very difficult going downhill. And my first time ever, I would say my legs got a little shaky. They were just spent. Um, I ended up doing just a fraction over five miles. And like I said, almost 2,600 feet. So uh, that was a lot, but, uh, and it's also mostly bushwhack. And there was a little bit of hint of trail if you saw, but that's about it. But yeah, so my legs are filling today. So that's another good thing about an easy hike. So uh, that's it. And then uh, after this hike, we'll see what we can uh, find. I have a couple plans. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and it's kind of looking nasty out there. So I got to I gotta check this out. All right. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Change of plans, big time. Man, I got out there and I've got all my uh, rain gear and, you know, starting to put my shoes on. And holy smokes, is it cold up there. I mean, it's like, an, and I actually have some rain pants to keep my legs warmer, but... It is really cold out there. You know, I was saying it's March 3rd. There's PCT hikers out there. Hope they get off the trail somewhere. Uh, hopefully there's somewhere they can get a room or just get out. But um, yeah, so I think I'm going to change the plans again. But uh, I think it might work out okay. It just depends on the weather. It's so funny because the weather's been just amazing for about, I don't even know, two weeks. And I get out here and it's crappy. So I don't know. Uh, this particular area, I've tried to hike twice now and had bad weather both times. But uh, there's a hike I wanted to do the last time. If you watched my last SUV when I was, uh, trip when I was up at uh, Mount Lagoon, I wanted to do one called Cemetery Hill. So maybe we'll do that. But I just have to see how the weather is. Last time it was like this. When I, uh, a couple weeks ago when I drove through uh, Julian, it's, it was raining and started to, to kind of sleet and snow. So you never know what we're going to get. But anyway, I'll take you with me. Maybe we can uh, see what's up in Julian. Uh, I have one place I want to take you if it's open. So... We'll try to do that. All right, onward. It's starting to rain hard now. I'm glad I'm in the car. <laughs>
Hey guys, so well, I showed you a little bit of uh, beautiful Jillian. I love seeing snow. I mean, I live over by the beach, so I've been there almost 40 years and never seen snow once. So it's really cool to get up the mountains, and it's amazing that I can drive uh, an hour and a half from the beach and see snow. And man, was it cold, because I always wear shorts. People were looking at me like I was an alien. There's something wrong with me. I don't know why, but maybe it was the shorts. But uh, man, it was bitterly cold. So I made the right call. It's pouring rain here. I'm driving out of the mountains back towards home. And oh, they're stopping us right here. So anyway, um, yeah, I wanted to show you that PCT store. Uh, uh oh, there might be a car crash here. Looks like there is, unfortunately. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna head home. And uh, one, I showed you a little bit of that PCT store. It's there every single year. And uh, uh, they're, you can see they're still kind of getting set up and everything, so they're not all the way done yet. I'm just going by this thing now. I don't know if you can see it or not. I guess you can't. Yeah, but there's a car off of the... Oh, yeah, there's a car off of the road, unfortunately. Darn. There's fire trucks and police here. But anyway, um, sorry for that distraction. That was kind of weird to do that right when I'm filming. But anyway... Uh, yeah, so I'm going to head home. Uh, that store is open. Uh, they start, I think, March 1st or 2nd. Uh, the permits for PCT hikers are March 1st. So it takes, they're at mile, uh, they're by, you would get off the PCT at mile 77 and then hitch 11 miles to Julian. So it takes most people, you know, uh, three or four days up to eight days to get there, depending on how slow they are. And by then, you know, what's great is after 77 miles, you kind of know a little bit more about your gear, what you need and don't need. And so they're there. If any of you guys are through hikers uh, this year or section hikers, uh, they have a lot of stuff there. And it's it's a small store, but everything they have there is stuff you could use. It's not, uh, you know, like camping stuff It's for, for hikers. So uh, check it out if you can. It's upstairs in a great building. I don't know the address, but anyway. That's it. I'm going to uh, drive home now. And I'm sorry, uh, this, you know, it seems like the last couple of trips have been very uh, fluid and they just keep changing. So unfortunately, I didn't uh, get the hikes in. I thought I would, but I had a good time. I found a new, that Culp uh, Valley uh, Primitive Campground. It's really great. So uh, I probably shouldn't even announce it because maybe you guys are going to go there. But uh, let's straighten this out a little bit. But yeah, so overall, it was a good trip. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I showed you a little bit of everything from cooking you know, to hiking, to camping, all that kind of stuff. Well, guys, this is about two hours since I saw you last at Julian. I'm now in Carlsbad, California, and look at this. 62 degrees and perfect, but that's how crazy the desert is. Think about this. Two days ago, I was hiking in almost 85 degree weather, climbing uh, Coyote Mountain, and now look what happened today between icy cold winds, snow, I had some sleet in there, tons of rain. So I abort the uh, trip, come down here, and it's perfect. So <laughs> the desert and the mountains create their own weather, as you know. So uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I just wanted to give you this little last uh, update. Just kind of crazy. Wish I was back out there, but we'll have to save it for next time. Thanks for watching. See you later.